In this lesson, you'll learn how to understand many-to-many -many relationships. Up until now, you've only worked with one-to-many relationships. Let's look at some one-to-many relationships in the real world. Here's my first example. You can see that one ladder has many rungs, and each rung has only one ladder. That's because a rung can't belong to two ladders at the same time. Let's look at another example, a jigsaw puzzle. In this case, one jigsaw has many pieces, but one piece has only one jigsaw. You've already modelled a one-to-many relationship within an Excel data model in Lesson 6.2, and here's the relationship that you modelled. And this was a one-to-many relationship between the category table and the product table. Specifically, one product can be associated with one and only one category, and one category can be associated with many products. And this relationship was modelled by associating the category ID primary key in the category table with the category ID foreign key in the product table. When you work with a relational database, you'll normally be given a copy of a schema. A schema is a sort of a road map, defining all of the tables and the relationships between them. Let's look at the schema you might be given for this database. This shows the product table, the category table, and the relationship between them. The standard Excel 2013 product doesn't have the ability to generate a schema. I created this one from Access 2013, the database product that comprises part of Microsoft Office. If your job involves working with data tables extracted from a corporate database, ask the DBA, that's the database administrator, to print out a copy of the schema for you. You'll find it a lot easier to define the relationships and to work with the data if you have a schema to document them all. Let's look at the information that we can glean from this schema. There's two tables, product table and category table. I can tell that the primary key of the category table is category ID because there's a little key symbol next to it, and in the product table the primary key is the product ID. And I can also see there's a relationship between category ID in the product table, that's the foreign key, and category ID in the category table, that's the primary key. And I can see that the category table is on the one side of the relationship, that's what that little one means, and the product table is on the many side. So I can say that one category can be used by many products, but each product is only ever in one category. So by now you should have quite a good understanding of one-to-many relationships. But now let's move on to many-to-many -many relationships. They're a bit more challenging to model. Let's have a real-world example of a many-to-many -many relationship, first of all. And the example I've chosen is a school. And the school has many classes. Let's have an English class, a maths class, and a science class. And the many-to-many -many relationship in this school is that one class has many students, and each student has many classes. So you might be asked to create an OLAP pivot table that would list all of the students in the science class. Or a student might ask you to provide an OLAP pivot table listing all of the classes that the student belonged to. Let's now look at how you'd model a many-to-many -many relationship. And the example I'm going to use is a many-to-many -many relationship that occurs in every single business in the world. And that is the relationship between products and invoices. Because one invoice can be associated with many products. And one product can be associated with many invoices. When I create an invoice, I'll often list several products on it, not just one. And each product 
may be invoiced on many invoices, not just one of them. And at any one time, I might want to report on which invoices a particular product has been invoiced on. And I might also like to print out all of the items that were sold on a particular invoice. So how do we model this many-to-many -many relationship? Well, you might be surprised to see that there's three tables rather than two. And that's because a many-to-many -many relationship requires a link table. This sits between the tables on either side of the many-to-many -many relationship. It's good practice to name this link table as a concatenation of the two tables that have the many-to-many -many relationship. So because this table is defining a many-to-many -many relationship between the invoice and the product table, it's named invoice product. And now notice the primary key of the link table. This is a concatenation of the primary keys found in the two related tables. So it actually consists of two foreign keys, the invoice ID foreign key and the product ID foreign key. And when they're joined together, they form the primary key of the invoice product link table. This is quite a challenging concept to understand. So let's describe each table individually in detail. First of all, the invoice table. This table contains information about the invoice as a whole. Think of it as the invoice before any items have been added. In this simple example, it only contains the invoice date and the invoice ID. But you'd also use this table to store information such as the ship to address or the invoice address or the purchase order number or the due date. And notice there's also a customer ID foreign key in this table. This identifies the customer to invoice in a separate customer table. And that isn't shown in this schema. Now let's look at the product table. This table contains information about each product. In this simple example, it only contains the product name, the quantity per unit, and the unit price fields. But notice there's also a category ID foreign key pointing to the category that the product belongs in. That's also not shown in this schema to keep things simple. You could also use this table to store other information about the product, such as the cost price or the wholesale discount. And now let's consider the invoice product table. This is the link table that defines the many-to-many -many relationship. And it also contains information about the relationship between a product and an invoice. In this case, the quantity sold. So if you considered an invoice with three lines to sell three different products, the invoice product table would have three rows with the invoice number that matched the invoice. And each of those rows would define a quantity and a product that had been sold on the invoice. Now, as I mentioned at the beginning of this lesson, even IT professionals often find many-to-many -many relationships difficult to understand. Unfortunately, database design is one of the least understood skills in the world of IT. And I've spent a great deal of my professional life implementing clumsy workarounds to overcome badly designed databases. One of the most common and recurring errors I've encountered in corporate databases all over the world is the incorrect modeling of many-to-many -many relationships. Often a programmer that doesn't really understand database design will try to model through. The normal error happens when the programmer didn't understand many-to-many -many relationships and tried to model a series of one-to-many relationships instead. Let's see how this might have happened in this scenario. If you see this type of table, you'll know at once that the designer didn't understand many-to-many -many relationships. The designer of this table has tried to work around the inability to model 
many-to-many -many relationships by defining three one-to-many relationships. That's product one, quantity one, product two, quantity two, and product three, quantity three, for three line items on an invoice. And you can see the obvious problem here. When you need to invoice four items on an invoice, the system breaks down. And then the programmer will often go back and add product four, product five, product six, and product seven. Unfortunately, you're almost certain to encounter design errors like this if you work with corporate data. But let's hope that your databases will be properly designed. Well, now that you understand many-to-many -many relationships, you're ready to move on to the next lesson when we'll create a real-world many-to-many relationship inside an Excel data model. And now you've completed Lesson 6-9. Understand many-to-many -many relationships.